For the longest time in my Linux journey, I've been using Z Shell with Power Level 10K, pretty much the default choice when you want to have a cool prompt that has all the information that you would possibly want without really needing to think about what you're actually doing. Everything is done for you, you just install everything in the correct steps and here you go, you got your prompt, you can fuck off. Very simple, right? I thought that it was limited. There's this shell that I'm now using, fish shell, and it's been hyped around in many places by many different people. The cool thing about it is that it's actually reasonable. Comparatively, at the very least, its syntax is much nicer to use, and now I actually regularly write my own functions, when in something like Z shell or bash, it would just be too difficult to even attempt. But naturally, I wanted to move my prompt experience from Z shell to fish shell, and at first it was a struggle. So there's this default way in which you make your shell prompt in fish. It works in a very simple way, you just define your function, which is called fish prompt, then you literally print all of your prompt to std out, then end to finish the function, and func save to save this function into a file, meaning you only need to run this function once, which is why you don't put it in your config.fish. Just run the function once, use func save, do not put it in your config.fish. But let's remember again that I was a Z shell user and making my own function with all of my prompts with all of the cool ass maybe unnecessary elements was way too difficult, so I decided to look for a shell prompt like power level 10k but now for fish. And eventually I found one, it's called Tide. I've actually made two videos on this, the first one is overall how to install fish along with Tide and the second video is how to configure Tide. So it's quite amazing because it, just like Power Level 10K, has asynchronous loading. Meaning, once you open your prompt and some information doesn't load out immediately, no worries because your prompt is asynchronous. So you can see that all of this loaded at once. In Tide, this would be immediate and then the branch would appear a bit later. Which is amazing behavior, but once you create another shell, the trade-off you would have is that you'd have to wait like 5 seconds for it to boot up. So creating shells over and over again for something like, I don't know, timer, 10 seconds, and then exit, now I can do... Oh, that's cute, actually. <laughs> now when I close this timer, it will exit the shell. But for me to use this functionality, my prompt has to appear in a reasonable fashion. So, like it is right now, which is pretty much immediate. Inside, that wasn't the case, and I pretty much had to have static shells that I just never close and never really open new ones which is a shame. So I decided to try Starship instead. This is the cross-platform shell prompt that you can use for many different shells, including fish. But you know what that means? That means that it's not asynchronous, meaning that the entire prompt has to be loaded fully, including the git information and other stuff that may take a while. And believe me, yes, they do. They do take a while to actually load up, making your prompt well, about two or maybe even three times slower than it is currently, which is a huge shame. But obviously the upside is that it boots up immediately once you start it, which is very cool. So I ditched the git status in my prompt and continued on to use Starship, but then I thought, well, hold up. If I'm not really using the only feature I used to care about, why am I even using an external prompt to begin with? Which is why now I just use the built-in fish way to make your own shell prompt. Yeah, I just print the stuff that I need and do the logic on it that I also need. Giving me a pretty damn reasonable prompt without that much hassle that I would have by installing prompts, setting them up, making sim links, and so on. You can see that my current prompt is kinda big, but not that huge compared to the billion options that you would have to set in both Tide and Starship. Of course, they also have more features, but most of them I don't really need. I just picked the things I personally need, implemented them, and like, here I go. Obviously now I don't have git status in my prompt, because yeah, it would take an immense amount of time to load up, but on the upside I can now create new shells very fast without any uh, downside like I would have in Tide. So what do I mean by this? Should you use Tide? Starship? 
the default version, well, my thought is, if you're a patient person who doesn't mind waiting a few extra seconds, I do recommend Tide most of all, more than Starship or the default prompt. But if loading up your shell takes 5 seconds and it bugs you the same way it bugs me, then consider, do you want something like version information, like language version information in your prompt? Or maybe some other features that are like hyper specific, but that you often see in shell prompts. Basically, how much information do you want in your prompt? If it's kinda a lot, I do recommend using Starship then. But if you only need a few things and they're not that hard to make, I recommend using the default way to do it in Fish, rather than using an external prompt. The huge benefit of this is that you don't need to install anything to make your prompt, well, exist. You just have it to begin with, and you don't need to worry about it. You just run the function and here you go, it's done. No installation, no plugins, no errors because something fucked up, so on. Very, very simple. However, you do lose the optimizations that the shell prompts probably have. And you probably won't, as well as me, because we're simply not as good at making them as the makers of the shell prompt, naturally. But most importantly, I do recommend trying a bunch of shell prompts until you're actually satisfied. If you're satisfied with something very simple, that's honestly like the best case scenario. I am not like that. I complain until it's fucking perfect. And it takes a lot for a shell prompt for me to be perfect. So I ended up spending a lot of time on it. Maybe you won't. Maybe you will spend even more time than I did. But nevertheless, I think it's an important thing to invest your time into because, well, it's the thing that you look at for a lot of your time. And if this video was useful to you, press a like, type some comment, maybe have a question or a suggestion. Definitely subscribe so you don't miss my content, but most importantly, stay fresh, cheese bags. Now I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye!